Okay, so now we're going to go into the interrupts. The interrupts for this thing are ridiculously simple. There's just a little thing you have to uh, keep in mind, right? So I have the code here. Um, first things first, we're going to actually enable the actual flags. Not the actual flags, but let's put that. I'm going to put it here. All right, so we're going back to control register one. We're enabling the interrupt for Rx not empty. So when the receiver is not empty, when the receiver um, buffer is not empty, we're going to get an actual interrupt, not just a flag. We'll get the flag too, which is important, but we'll also get an interrupt. And then we're also going to enable the interrupt for um, TXE, which means that the transmitter is empty or the transmitter buffer data register is empty and we'll get obviously the flag but this time we're also going to get an interrupt after doing that you also have to remember to enable your uh, enable the interrupt on the NVIC line right and I'm going to put that down here Oop, where are we? okay now this UART number, uh, um, again, you can find these. Where the hell are we in your, is it in your startup file? Yeah. No, no, that's not in the startup file. Where are the, uh, geez Louise. Let's go here. All right, it's in the, actually it's in the header file, right? The same file that you included up here. That's where you're going to find the UART numbers for all your um, your interrupts it's also in the data sheet actually if you go here to interrupts and events here are the list of all the interrupts and possible events that the microcontroller supports as you can see this right here position this position number that is what uh, this number represents that position number so if you look here at UART1 it is 37 you are one again oops moving it 37 so that's all that is um, and also with interrupts um, you have to understand that the these interrupts as it is with a lot of these are global interrupts okay and I'll explain what that means in just a second and this is the address where it expects the interrupt handler to be so you have to define an interrupt handler that's going to be located at this exact address and that's where a, um, it's going to go once this uh, interrupt is, is generated so you can define your IRQNs in this header file and you have to en enable that through this function here which just enables it on the NVIC block once you do that then you have to actually go ahead and write your uh, interrupt service routine which I'm going to copy and paste over here let's go ahead and delete these comments all right now this function has to have a specific name and it's this name because it's been defined in one of these other files I'm not gonna go ahead and dig for it right now it's been defined to be nothing more than a function pointing to this address right so that function is defined at that address that's why you have to use this specific name if you notice uh, it's nothing more then whatever name you see here for the description or the acronym it's going to be the same name and then an underscore IRQ handler so for example the CAN1TX uh, interrupt handler is going to be called this plus an underscore capital IRQ capital H handler IRQ handler so as you can see here you have UART1 and then the handler is UART1 underscore capital RRQ handler now these handlers are also located in your startup file here so if you go here and this is your vector table this is the first one of the first thing that the microcontroller uh, does upon starting up is define the entire vector table and you'll find here your interrupt handler so you can just copy it from here if you want and define your uh, your function here your interrupts always have to be void void type right return void and then void arguments because well it's obvious it's an interrupt so 
it can't return anything because nobody's essence calling it. So who's where's it going to return something? And it can't take any arguments because again, you're not calling it anywhere in your code. So how are you, on earth are you going to pass it an argument, right? All right. Now this code in the in the uh, interrupt handler is the exact same code that's up here. This if statement is this exact same code. So I can just go ahead and delete that. And that's all of this if statement, which got lost its formatting. And this is uh, the reception, right? So like I said before, the IRQ for this, the, um, the interrupt for this, it's a global interrupt. You see that? It's a global interrupt. That means even though we have three different uh, things that can generate an interrupt, we have the RXNE, which is the receiver not empty. We also have an interrupt for the transmitter empty. And there's also an interrupt for transmitter complete. And there's many more interrupts. But only this gets executed. So, and since we can't pass it any arguments, once this interrupt gets executed in this function, there's no telling what caused it. Like, how did we get to this function? We really don't know which of those three caused the interrupt uh, to happen because it's only one line. We don't have a separate line for Rx, a separate line for Tx. So we're only getting one interrupt for all those flags. So what you have to do uh, is check the status register. You check the status register inside your interrupt service routine so that you can see, okay, which of my flags are set. That way you know, okay, this flag is set, then obviously that's what generated the interrupt. So in here, um, it's the same code that was over there. I'm checking my RXNE flag, right, to see if it's set, because that means we've received data, and then I'm doing the same echo program as before. I'm also checking, uh, because I've activated the TXT interrupt, I'm checking if we're done transmitting data. The only thing is I haven't done anything because I don't really want to do anything for this simple program of just echoing something. So I hope I made that clear that there is just one interrupt. Even though you activate separate things that can generate this interrupt, there is only one interrupt. And in that interrupt, you have to check your status regi register so you can figure out which of these three things was the ones that uh, generated the interrupt itself. Um, so, yeah, let's compile this and hopefully it works also. And let's send it to over here. This is the one from before. Reset the board. And there it is. It's the same thing. And the difference between this and the previous one is, as you can see, my while loop is absolutely empty and I'm only doing this status register checking and all this thing when it's actually relevant when there's actually data that's been received I'm not constantly checking the status register to see if I receive data so my program is actually free to do other things right that's the beauty of interrupt driven uh, uh, programs so anyways yeah Easy peasy stuff for interrupts for the, uh, specifically for this um, for this perf of the UART and I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope I made that nice short and sweet enjoy yourselves all right stay tuned for more videos go to the damn blog man I need some views.